Today's lesson is on graphing radical functions. But before we jump into the lesson, let's have a quick riddle. What type of clothes does a house wear? A dress. Get it? Address? <laughs> okay. Let's recall how we graph parabolas. Um, here we can look at this equation in vertex form and easily remember that we go opposite of sign for the X and same sign for the Y. And that gives us our vertex back to up three. And the negative tells us that this parabola is going to open downward. And the square tells us that we square our x values. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, so forth and so on. We have our symmetry, and hopefully we do remember this uh, process, and we try to make our parabola nice and round. And there's a quick sketch of a parabola. Um, believe it or not, all functions work just the same as these parabolas as far as their transformations, how they shift and flip and shrink. All functions um, have the same characteristics. Um, we're going to see that today as we graph uh, radicals. But first, let's make this one by using a table. If we plug in these x values, we would have y equals the square root of negative 9, and we get 3i. Notice the values I picked here are perfect squares. And I did that on purpose um, because this is a square root. And remember, our x values, we can pick whatever we want. And later, we'll see where we can pick y values as well. Anyway, if we go ahead and populate this table, we'll see our values. Now, on this coordinate plane, we can only graph real numbers. So, we're not, these don't exist on this graph. So, if we graph these numbers, we'll see approximately where this graph is. And the first thing I hope you notice is that it's very similar to a square or parabola. It's actually flipped and rotated. And we're going to, in the next chapter, we're going to see that these are inverse functions and how inverse functions are related. Actually, you'll start to see that today. Notice there are no negative values back here. Let's go ahead and go to example two. And I want you to remember how the parabola works. This is a square root function. Actually, let's know that there are no transformations here. So we call this a parent function. This is our basic shape. And now we'll talk about how it shifts and flips and all the different transformations. So the first thing I want you to know is we can easily see the vertex by going opposite and there's nothing here. If we look at the vertex here, and I'm calling it a vertex, it's more like an endpoint. We could go opposite and there's nothing over here, so that's a zero. Here there's nothing with the x and a negative two. So it works just like the parabola to find our initial endpoint. So 0, 0, our parent function would go this way, but it's negative. So this is going to flip down. And notice we still have our regular points. The square root of 1 is 1, um, one and the square root of 4 is 2. See, those points are evident here, and we can flip them downward. Let's go back up to example 1 for a moment. I want you to realize that the square and the square root are very related. When we went here, we said 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4. Well, isn't the square root of 4 2? The square root of 9 
is three. So the square and square roots, we're using the same points that we're already very familiar with. Okay, let's go here, negative four, zero. So I'm gonna plot that point. It's positive, so it's turned up. The square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three. And we see again, we have the same points and the graph is very easy. Here, we can start at zero, negative two and do the same points. The square root of one is one, the square root of four is two. And we can shift this around just like we did before with the parabolas. Let's talk a little bit more about the square and the square root. Two squared is four. What about seven squared is 49? And likewise, we can look and say, well, the square root of four is two and the square root of 49 is seven. So immediately we can see that they're very much related we're going to find out next chapter that these are inverse functions. So if we're looking at y equals x squared, and I just gave a couple of values, negative 2 squared is 4, um, 0 squared is 0, and 4, and let's say 4 squared is 16. I'd like for you to notice over here, if we look at the square root, we have some similarities. The square root of 4 is, um, is 2. And let's be careful with the negative values because we see here there are no negative values and there's no values down here. So we want to be very careful. But I want you to notice for the positive values, when we take the square root of 0, we get 0. The square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 16 is 4. So I just want you to notice that the x and y values are switching. They're just reversed, okay? So switching or swapping <laughs> um, the x and y values um, is going to be very important. Let's look at a couple more graphs. What happens when we compare y equals x cubed to the cube root of x? Well, let's populate this table. And I want you to definitely keep in mind that it's okay to cube a negative number. The negative stays, right? So if you plug in negative 2, you get negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 which gives you a negative 8, a negative 1, 0, 1, 8. 3 cubed would be 27. Now, if we plot these points, negative 2 goes to negative 8, 2, 4, 6, 8. Um, negative 1 is negative 1, 0, 1, over 2, 2, 4, 6, 8. goes way up here. And this is our parent function. And this is what y equals x cubed looks like. Now, likewise, and I want you to pay close attention to this, if we take the cube root of negative 8, that equals negative 2. And remember, we don't need imaginary numbers, okay? We just use the negative sign. The cube root of 1 is 1. The cube root of 8 is 2. And once we graph these, negative 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and down 2, you're going to see when we plot these, and that goes off the page, which is okay. that the shapes of these graphs are the same, it's just flipped and rotated. And we're going to notice that relationship more and more with inverse functions, which, like I said, we'll be talking about 
in the next lesson. All righty. Let's look at one more really fast. What if we wanted to graph y equals the square root of negative x. Notice the negative is under the radical. So what's going to happen here, let's say we take negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. When you put negative 4 in, it now becomes a positive 4. And the square root of positive 4 is 2. And actually, I shouldn't have used negative 2. I should have used negative 1. Because remember, we want to pick perfect squares. And now when I plug in negative 1, that ends up positive 1. 0. But when I plug in a positive 1, I end up with the square root of negative 1, which is i. And 2i. So now this graph, when we plot the points, we get points over here. And these are imaginary. So notice that the graph flips backwards when you graph y equals the square root of negative x. Very different from if we graph <clears throat> if we graph negative square root of x, that ends up down this way. So know that the negative out front flips across the x-axis, but the negative underneath flips across the y-axis. So we in pre-calculus, you'll get to know all of these uh, different graphs very well. Let's look at one more before we conclude. Let's say we wanted to graph y equals the square root of x plus 2 minus 4. The first thing I would like for you to do is figure out the end point where this graph is going to start. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, negative 4. And now, hopefully, we're very familiar with the points. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. And this graph just gets easier and easier.